Hi, welcome back to part two of the immune system. We left off last time talking about the different types of defense, and we finished going through the first line of defense, which was nonspecific. We're moving on to the second line of defense. The second line of defense is also nonspecific. So if a pathogen makes it past that first line of defense and gets into the body, the second line of defense is activated. Like I just got through saying, this is also nonspecific. White blood cells and chemical defenses that cause inflammation are what activates that second line of defense. And we call it the inflammatory response because it causes us to become inflamed. So these are examples of inflammatory responses. If we get bites, we get pustules, like these little things filled with pus, we get redness, swelling, it's hot to the touch, and it hurts. So for example, if we get bit by a fire ant, the skin is broken, and that allows the toxin from the ant to get into your skin. That toxin is then carried to your body through your blood. At the site of the bite, the skin becomes swollen, it becomes red, and a lot of times it becomes kind of hot or warm to the touch. And again, that's called the inflammatory response. So can you think of anything else aside from that fire ant bite that might cause an inflammatory response? Hmm. So I was thinking maybe poison ivy, even regular allergies. Think about it. When it's allergy season and there's pollen everywhere around trees, from plants, you start sneezing, you get kind of itchy, um, you might get a little bit of a fever. Those are other types of inflammatory response or causes of inflammatory response. Inflammation is caused by white blood cells moving to the area of the infection. So right here is a white blood cell that's going to be moving to the area of the infection. Examples of the inflammatory response. So when something enters our body, we release histamine. This is a chemical which causes blood vessels to dilate, causing redness. Dilate means to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So when we say someone's pupils are dilated, that means that that black part in the middle of your eye has gotten really, really big. Now the opposite of dilate is to constrict. So remember, C is for constrict, and dilate gets smaller or bigger and bigger and bigger, and constricting, think of like a boa constrictor, it just closes around you and gets tighter and tighter and tighter. So when our blood vessels dilate, that allows for lots of blood to go through it. That's why you get that reddish pinkish color, because all of the blood is rushing to the surface. Fluid also leaks out of all of these blood vessels to the injured tissue to help destroy the toxins, and this causes the swelling and the pain that's associated with the inflammatory response. Now if you look back up at this word histamine, that might sound a little bit familiar for those of you that have allergies like I do, because when my allergies flare up, I take a pill that is called an antihistamine. Antihistamines actually block that part of the inflammatory response because our immune system, whenever we're exposed to pollen or something we're allergic to, it goes into hyperdrive and we start sneezing and itching. And an antihistamine prevents that because our body's immune system is a little too active. So the second line of defense or the inflammatory response also can cause fevers. So fever is another way the inflammatory response works. An elevation in body temperature creates an unfavorable environment to pathogens such as bacteria. However, it creates a very favorable environment for producing new white blood cells, which help aid in the attack of that pathogen. So we've talked about the first and the second lines of defense now. Both of them are non-specific meaning they treat everything that crossed their paths the same. Doesn't matter if it's a bacteria or a virus or a protozoa or a mosquito, it treats them all the same. If the pathogen gets past those first two lines of defense, then it goes into the very last line or third line of defense. The third line of defense happens at a cellular level and it is specific, 
meaning that it is only going to work for that specific pathogen and it will develop a way of killing that specific pathogen. So the third line of defense depends on T cells and B cells. And remember, T is for thymus. So these are both types of white blood cells. When the body is infected by a pathogen, the immune system is triggered into a response to seek and destroy. So T cells are a type of white blood cell. T's attack, T attack, T attack. So those attack the pathogens and they travel to the infected site, they attach to the infected cell, and they release enzymes that destroy it. And it helps to produce memory cells, so they will remember how to destroy if that pathogen comes back. We also have B cells. So once those T cells go into attack and destroy, they trigger an immune response that produces B cells. B is for antibody. B is for antibody. So they produce antibodies. Antibodies are proteins in the bloodstream that bind to an antigen. So the antigen is bad. This is the disease causing agent. So we have our antibody right here that binds with the antigen like a lock and a key, very similar to the way an enzyme would bind with a substrate. So it's Y-shaped, the, anti the antibody is Y-shaped, and it binds with the antigen. They destroy the pathogen and prevent the host from contracting the same disease again in the future, meaning if you're exposed to the exact same sickness, you will have antibodies already made that know exactly how to destroy that type of pathogen. Antibodies are highly specific, meaning they only work for one specific antigen. Whether it's a bacteria or a virus, it is specific for that bacteria. It is specific for that virus. And each time a new disease is contracted, new antibodies have to be produced. So if I get the flu one year, the flu mutates every year. So I'm not going to have antibodies for the new strain of the flu virus. If I was exposed to the old strain of the flu virus, then I would still have those antibodies. But each year it mutates. That's why I get a flu shot every year. And the process of making antibodies specific to the infecting pathogen takes about a week. So I got my flu shot on Sunday. Today is Monday. So if I got exposed to this year's flu virus, I would still get sick. I'm not safe until next Sunday. So to summarize our different types of defenses, we have a pathogen that infects the body. We then go into our first line of defense. It is non-specific, meaning it treats everything the same. The first line of defense is composed of our skin, our eyes, our mouth, our nose, and our throat, our mucous membranes. That's our first line of defense. Second line of defense is our inflammatory response and this causes redness, swelling, pain, and fever. It too is non-specific. So the first and second lines of defense are non-specific. The third line of defense is specific, meaning that it attacks only that cell or only that virus and kills it. So the third line of defense is composed of T cells, T attack. So T cells attack and they seek out and destroy the pathogen. B cells, B is for antibody, produce antibodies who destroy the pathogen. And then some antibodies actually stay in our blood. So how do we prevent some of these diseases from occurring? Some diseases are so severe that they can cause illness and possible death. The immune system can't work fast enough to disable some of those pathogens. So to protect us against those pathogens, we need a little bit of a jump start. And that's what a vaccine is. Like I keep talking about, I got my flu shot right here this past Sunday. That way, my body has a jump start in case I'm exposed to it. So vaccinations artificially are produced, and they artificially produce acquired immunity. 
substances that contain a weakened pathogen are in vaccines. So the vaccines have something that is either weakened or killed. So when I got my flu shot this weekend, it was a dead portion of the flu virus. So they injected me with a dead strain of the flu virus, and now right now, my body is actually producing antibodies for that strain of the flu. Sometimes a vaccine contains just weakened portions of a virus or a bacteria. So because those pathogens are weakened, they don't cause the person to get sick. However, they do cause an immune reaction. The immune system produces memory cells that will remember how to kill it if they're infected with the full-blown thing. So when a person is exposed to a pathogen, their body can quickly start producing antibodies at a much faster rate than usual, and it stimulates the T cells already present to kill the pathogen. Vaccines cannot cure a person who has already become sick. So if I got the flu, and I tried to get a flu shot afterwards, it's not going to do me any good. They can only present, prevent future illnesses. So I want you guys to think again about this comic strip. Why is Batman smacking Robin across the face? Because he wants antibiotics for the cold. You might want to really think about this because I would not be surprised if this was a question on one of your quizzes. So I'll see you guys next time. Have a great night.